Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna start a brand new Christmas costume. That's right. So I am obviously like in love, obsessed with Disney. It's a thing. You might be catching on here. Uh, and I decided, I've actually had uh, this gown on my to-do list for ages. And that is um, Belle's like holiday dress. Uh, I have some park pictures of her. Um, I saw this in person, I think five or five years, six years ago at the parks. Five years, it doesn't matter, a few years ago at the Disney parks when we were celebrating my partner's birthday because we go to, to Disney for our birthdays because that's how you adult. Uh, <laughs> so we, I saw this in the parade and I, I just was floored. I loved it. I loved the gold and the red. Um, I just thought it was such a beautiful Christmas dress and I had every intention to try to make it for a hall mat two years ago, um, but I made the white Christmas red dress instead, this one right here. Um, so th this year now, I'm gonna, I think, attempt, well not I think, I, I already have started making this gown. Um, I'm, you, this is gonna be a couple videos, so this week, next week, and the week after. Uh, and this week we're gonna cover like part of the skirt. I had every intention to make this a dress and an underskirt and then I kept looking at photos and, and kept going down that rabbit hole and I changed my mind um, literally like a day before I was go going to add a waistband on it and I, I changed my mind because uh, well you'll just see throughout the process and I'll show you at the end but I wanted to also just say a little hey if you missed last week's video on this cage crinoline, you should probably go check it out because I show you how I made my hoop skirt or cage crinoline, whatever you want to call it. Same, same diff. Um, I have a whole video on it. I'll link it up there and I'll also put it in the description. So I made a whole new hoop for this costume, but also for the purpose of documenting it because I know that you guys like to see those things and like to know about those things. Um, also, I would like to say at the beginning of this video, if you like my content, subscribe. Do it. Okay, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Let's jump right into making this underskirt and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. The underskirt is really just your basic circle skirt, and I will link to a calculator that I use to help me make a circle skirt, but since my fabric is not nearly wide enough to do a complete circle in one cut of fabric, I chose to break it up into three panels. I did half of the circle in front on a fold, and then the other two quarters of the circle in the back. To do this, I will measure my radius 4.5 inches on the folded fabric for the front panel. I also knew that the length of the skirt would be around 44 inches, so I added that plus my 4.5 plus an inch or so for the hem, and I just called it 50 inches. And that's what I measure from the same point at that center front um, for the uh, for the hem and I make several markings before cutting this because the hem is so wide it ends up being six yards in length so um, I will pin it and then um, or I will mark it and then I will pin it and then I will cut it in several places around this circle and I will say that I always try to cut these on the salvage if I can because it just means that there's one less edge I have to clean up later. Now I'm going to repeat this process again but for the back two panels. These will not be on a fold because I didn't buy enough fabric to get two half circles out of it. So these are gonna be like quarter circles. And this also means that one of my edges will not be on the salvage and later on I will need to make this uh, clean. I'll need to clean up this edge. 
Once my circle skirt panels are cut, I'm going to hang them over my photo shoot backdrop and let them hang for the rest of the day. The reason for doing this is because they are cut on the bias and that means that there will be a bit of stretching that will happen. So hanging them allows gravity to do its work and then my hem will be easier for me to do when I get there. Ideally, you would want to hang these for two days, a day or two, um, but I'm doing mine for like five or six hours. Okay, so here you go. You can see a little bit better of a view of what this is. So I'm gonna be cutting out this segment to put at the bottom of the skirt. I know that's not how the design is, but again, I like to use the designs as more of a, so you know, it's some, it's information. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not set in stone. It's not exactly how I have to do it. But um, this, I think I have three yards of this, maybe only, you know, I do. I have three, and it's double-sided. So you, there's the middle one, and then there's all these cute little guys. But then again, it repeats on this side too. So we're gonna figure out how much we need, and we're gonna cut it, and then um, kind of go from there. Um, I would love to add some beads and not rhinestones, cause like, well, maybe rhinestones here. I don't know. I'd love to add some stuff to it, but I think I need to get it onto the dress first, and then like figure out, okay. You know, what part of the dress would I embellish? Would I embellish all of it? Would I embellish some of it? Uh, and then what would I use to embellish it? So right now, I think what I need to do is plug my tool in and uh, get going on this and then also measure. So yay, this is what I'm doing. The Heatcraft tool from RNK is the tool I will be using to take my red velvet trim off of the fabric I purchased. It comes with a few different tips. I like to use the knife tip for this. Please note that if you are cutting into a polyester fabric that you should wear a respirator because the fumes from the polyester are very bad for you and cosplay is not worth risking your life for. Also, just like hot glue is hot, hot wands are hot too. <laughs> If you have never used a heat cutting tool before, I would recommend trying it on a test piece of fabric before cutting it into or around the piece we want. It does take a bit to get used to, but for me, it felt like holding a crystal setting tool, so I didn't have trouble with it. I'm focusing on cutting the tool around the red velvet design without actually cutting into the red velvet or the design. There are at least six yards of this design to cut, so I just put on a podcast and went to town on cutting. If a heat crafting tool is not accessible to you, tiny thread scissors work great, but I found it takes about double the time for me and my thumb and wrist typically hurt really bad after using them, so I stick to the heat tool. I don't really have a technique or strategy, I just take things one section at a time and in these little crevices here, I just really go as slow as I can to make sure not to cut into um, my velvet. Once my trim is cut out, it's time to put together the skirt pieces, but first I need to cut out pockets. I have a very generic pocket pattern piece that I use for literally all of my dresses with pockets. It's large enough to, for both of my wallet and phone to fit into one pocket, and sometimes I hide snacks in my pockets, but that'll be our little secret. I did overlock the edge of the pocket as well as the one side of the back panels that needed a clean edge, and here I am also pressing the, that overlock edge. If you're new to the channel, then hi, welcome. I like to sew things in batches. So I stitched together the back seams starting 8 inches from the top, and I also stitched the pockets to the side seams on both the back 
half of the dress as well as the front half of the dress. Now I can attach the front to the back around the pockets. I like to backstitch over the pocket corners for extra security at the pockets. So buckle up because we have officially reached the part of the process where I hand sew for several days because I completely spaced out on using my free motion quilt foot to sew this down. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, I promise I will show you someday and just proceed to watch the footage of my hand sewing three yards of trim down one half inch at a time. I should mention that before I started pinning this trim down, I did hang the skirt on my dress form over my hoop skirt and take note of how much I would be hemming this skirt. Something that I also struggled with was this is a straight piece of trim. My skirt is not a rectangle, it is a circle. So I had to cut into my velvet design and overlap it to get it to fit. I'll show you in a minute how I hide this complete and utter disaster of a slash in my trim. I promise it ends up looking good, but right there, not so much. And now for the Casey Renee hand sewing show. So basically on the top of this velvet, I will sew the smallest tack. I don't know, maybe a 16th of an inch. And then on the back of this fabric, I will stitch between a quarter and of an inch and a half an inch depending on how much hot chocolate I've had. Um, and then I'll just repeat this all the way around my design. It took me days. I should have used the free motion quilt foot, drop those feed dogs. We'll talk about that later at some point in my life. This, these are the decisions I have made. This is the way. It's time to address those ugly slashes I made in the velvet. Once I realized that was really the only thing I could do to make this trim fit, I decided to go back to that fabric and cut out a bunch of these sequin flowers. Once I trimmed the tool off of the flowers, it was time to pin them on top of the velvet pieces and tack them down. At first, I was only going to do two for every seam, but they just were not enough to cover the entire slash, so I did three flowers for every slash, and then I hand stitched them down. I ended up using 33 flowers and I was going to add beads to this piece, but I couldn't really find any in my stash that looked right, so I'll save the beads for the trim on the outer layer of the skirt. On my skirt, I placed it back on my dress form over my hoop and I folded the edge up where it hits the ground. Later, I realized the entire form was two inches shorter than me. Ugh. And then I had to redo this section, but at least it wasn't sewn down or anything. I had just pinned it. So later, after this clip, I end up going back and making some adjustments because it was two inches short and it actually uh, ended up fine. But, you know, things happen. Once adjustments were made, I pressed and pinned the hem. I have to admit, I totally meant to line this skirt, but I had a change of heart because my lining fabric was not wide enough to work with the full length of the skirt. And then I also meant for this to be its own skirt and 
I just I decided that it would make more sense to combine the like red skirt that goes over this with this one on one waistband and then the bodice obviously would just be itself like it is in the like artwork um so that's what I did and you know I'm pretty happy with it all I've got for this video. Um, I am working on the next part of the skirt, which is going to be um, like a circle-y skirt uh, that's going to go over it in the red velvet, and it's going to be fully lined, and the front is going to have this really pretty detail with trim. Um, so that's what you guys will get to learn about next week. Next week is going to be kind of a beadwork heavy week, so I'm going to show you uh, just a little bit of how I do my beading. Um, and then how do I attach that trim to the gown? And then hopefully I will be able to do a fit of the skirt and maybe get some twirling video in next week. So make sure you stay tuned to subscribe, ring the bell so you can see the progress in a week. Um, and if you really like my art and you would like to support me and help fund these projects, you can head on over to Patreon. I would really just like to shout out and thank my current patrons. Um, they help me decide what kind of trim to use on this dress, but they've also helped me fund the trim for this dress. So that's awesome and they are fabulous. So you can head on over there. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's any other cool stuff happening. Go check out my Cage Crinoline video because I worked real hard on it and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I just, this is the third video where I'm like, go check out my Cage Crinoline video. <laughs> Please, I'm desperate. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, if you guys like Disney, if you like sewing, if you like historical costuming and you just like pretty things that have to do with sewing, subscribe to my channel. Uh, this is the last project of the year. It's pretty freaking exciting. We are almost done with 2020. So, you know, you definitely want to subscribe because you want to know what's going on here next year. All right. I will see you in the next video. Happy sewing.